Let's welcome in Rupal Agarwal. Uh, she's joining us right now. She, she of course, uh, is Senior Research Analyst, Asia Quantitative Strategy at Bernstein. Rupal, good to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time. So let's just start by talking about quants. And, uh, you know, uh, there is no real direct play on what's happening with NVIDIA and the big uh, AI boom in the US. But maybe we could look at correlations. I'm not sure if you've kind of uh, looked at that. Uh, but somebody earlier, a guest two days back, was highlighting that you know, U.S. tech, uh, and especially these large five or seven names which are, which are seen as a play on tech, India stocks and Japan, these are, I mean, highly correlated over the last one year or so. On the quants, uh, quant side, have you kind of looked at this? Any thoughts at all? Um, yes, so we have looked at it not specifically from a tech perspective, but overall the kind of correlation that we are seeing with Indian markets versus U.S. markets has been very, very tight. Uh, in the last three years, it's not just you know uh, since the, since the beginning of this AI rally, Japan of course there is a uh, you know a direct uh, sort of correlation uh, because uh, you know Japan semis is something which is uh, undergoing this massive geopolitical uh, support system that is being built up and uh, hence any kind of positivity around Nvidia results will always have uh, you know this massive boom for uh, for Japan. So there is there is a and I think the other way to look at it is. Uh, whenever tech names, which is largely, you know, your uh, proxy of a risk on rally in US, when that happens, we do see most of the international equities doing well. And then uh, because India and Japan have been those two favorite markets across Asia, we do see, uh, you know, more of a momentum building up in these markets. Okay, by the way, it's a good screen, actually. The mid-cap index is up almost about half a percent. And if you're wondering, from the frontliners, Reliance is at a fresh record high this morning. Uh, so don't lose sight of that. ICICI Bank is at a fresh 52-week high as well. Reliance is now just shy of the 3,000 mark. It's been a very strong run. Uh, you know, this year already, Reliance has put in 15% weight. DLF is at a fresh 52-week high as well. And a couple of other names, HCL Tech is at a fresh record high. So looking pretty good. A fresh 52-week high, that is. So looking pretty good. Rupal, hi. Good morning. I was going through your strategy note and you say that you find only limited opportunities within the PSU portfolio. Can you elaborate on that? Because PSUs have been the big thing, right, in the last um, fortnight, in the last couple of months, rather. Uh, your thoughts on whether there is more to go? Would you start to get a bit cautious here? Um, yeah, so I think PSUs, of course, have taken up a lot of mind share and rest of money flow has happened, uh, you know, in these pockets. Um, my sense is uh, there are, yes, only limited opportunities left now. I would become more cautious towards, uh, you know, these names which have been uh, very high proxies of high beta, uh, which is which sits a lot in this PSU, uh, you know, basket. So that's where we think vulnerability are building up. Um, but we are okay to actually still get into names which are, say, providing a high dividend yield. Uh, that would be the limited opportunity set where we are comfortable adding at these levels. Uh, most of the other, uh, you know, areas, and, and I would say large part of them will be more in the PSU banks and industrial space. That's where valuations are quite stretched. Um, and we are seeing that it, there's nothing been uh, but a proxy of uh, chasing the very strong momentum in the market or, in fact, you know, being completely risk on. And that's something that I'm uh, not very comfortable chasing at these levels. Okay. All right. Uh... Hi, Rupal. The morning. Good to see you, Vince. So industrials, well, they're trading at a bit of a premium, but PSU banks, maybe they offer some more value. Rupal, I want to ask you about the Indian markets on the whole. You know, we have been thumping the table, earnings growth over here, political stability as well. And we're going to be having another election, which in all probability will have continuity that takes place. How much of the good news is in the price, though, at these levels of around 22,300 on the index itself? I would say a large part of it is in the prices. That's been one of the reasons we've been relatively more cautious around Indian equity since the beginning of the year. Um, I think, see, the domestic flow is definitely strong. The sticky SIP flow keeps on supporting the market. Um, but I do think that, you know, for foreigners to come back meaningfully, we need to see valuation, uh, you know, coming down. And if we look at year to date, they've not been very comfortable adding at these levels. Um, so I do think that, yes, a lot of this you know, positivity around India, whether it's political stability or whether it's earnings, um, a lot is in the prices already. Okay, a lot is in the price already. So where do you see opportunity now? I mean, are there any spaces where you think that there could be both growth potential as well as some valuation upside? See, we've been arguing to rotate within the market more towards your larger names, more towards your quality names. 
Uh, and, you know, in the recent PSU note, for example, we've highlighted that, uh, you know, looking at specifically chasing the value rally, I would be more comfortable doing that through, say, the dividend yielding name. So those would be the kind of pockets to look for opportunities right now. Um, it's not that there are no opportunities, but there are limited again. Um, but I think that needs to be the big rotation in the market because, you know, last year there was everything pretty much was doing well, but parts of the market were largely led by this, you know, very strong junk rally that happened in India. We saw, of course, a big momentum, uh, you know, sort of push. And a lot of that is uh, looking slightly more pricey and topish uh, at this point. Okay, it's looking pricey and topish at this point. So you're saying rotate into uh, large cap names, rotate into quality names and dividend yield stocks is something that you like. Got it. What do you do with some of the large cap private sector banks? You know, because now suddenly buying has started over there. Uh, delivery based buying has picked up quite a bit, but HDFC bank and the likes. Uh, what are your thoughts there? Is this a good time to be buying? See, I can't comment on any particular name per se, but if I have to compare you know, the analysis that we've done, for example, on PSU banks uh, was, um, so I can say that given that most of the PSU banks uh, don't look very attractive, um, you know, that does mean that we could start see, uh, you know, some interest coming back on the private side. Even if I look at from purely style perspective, uh, you know, the private banks would be, I would say, I would say they're not in, in our buy list right now, but they're not, not in our sell list as well. So they're very moderately positioned across the multiple styles that we track. Uh, so I'm I'm okay with adding more on the on the private banks. Mm, all right, uh, you know the problem I think Rupal is that the PSU banks many of them are underowned by the mutual fund industry, while on the private banks they are topped out, and then they've gone through this painful last six to around twelve months or so. I guess that would be the technical factors at play as well. But Rupal, I recall when we chatted the last time, you know we were talking about China and how China was bombed out, and from those levels maybe in fact that could be some kind of a rebound. Now, post the new year, there have been signs that maybe, in fact, there are measures being taken both by the government, by the regulators out there to bring some stability. Uh, what is your view on that market? Yes. So, uh, you know, we the last time that we spoke, I, I did mention that we are expecting a tactical rebound in China. Mm. Things are moving more positively there now. If you look at some of the recent data that has come out of the you know Chinese New Year, we have seen uh, you know big move up in the travel data. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of policy measures which are being implemented. Um, investor sentiment is, uh, is is improving. So we are seeing some, you know, sort of positivity building up in the market. It's too soon to say that whether it's going to be a, you know, a big move where we start seeing uh, too much positivity from investor perspective. I think most investors are taking it very slow um, and that's likely to play out in the near term. But uh, but I think directionally we are expecting the markets to continue to be more on that upward uh, trajectory from here. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> I know I got that uh, absolutely. So, you know, uh, one of the uh, one of the sort of broad kind of uh, this is slightly pulling back a little bit, Rupal. Uh, the consensus seems to be that the only thing working against India, right, the market here is valuations. Otherwise, uh, and and that maybe calls for a bit of consolidation till earnings catch up and numbers on the PE front, etc., come off a little bit. Otherwise, I mean, things look uh, pretty uh, pretty set. Uh, for the next few years, is that is that uh, your broad thesis at Bernstein as well? Uh, yes, uh, valuations definitely are. I would say one of the biggest bottlenecks for I would say more more for global investors to really add uh, or keep on adding at these levels in India. Uh, even in our framework, you know, valuations do, does stand out. Uh, you know, quite stretched uh, with respect to both its own history and you know, versus the premium that it typically mm. trades to other markets. Um, but I think at the same time, uh, you know, there are a few other factors. I would say earnings definitely, earnings revisions or upgrades have actually peaked in India. So if we start, if we don't start seeing again a revival of that upgrade cycle, then it becomes mm. difficult. Uh, this, the third thing would be, uh, you know, the kind of rate cut environment that actually the markets are already pricing in. So Indian market is already pricing its 6.3% 10-year bond yields. I don't foresee that happening in the near term. So that to me also remains one key risk, uh, you know, in the market. And then of course, you know, it's it's more about the flow, right? So the domestic flow will provide a support uh, or a flow to the market, but unless we start seeing major comeback of foreigners, it becomes difficult to move, uh, you know, quite strongly. So I think those would be the other uh, important factors to consider apart from, uh, you know, just valuations. 
All right. Thanks a lot for that, Rupal. Uh, appreciate your time here on CNBC TV 18. That's Bernstein. A bit cautious on the market, actually, saying that there's not too much by way of valuation upside and they prefer to stick to large cap names, stick to quality names and dividend yield stocks is something that they are looking at.